we will discuss how adversity can be converted into an opportunity and the principles of environment and ecology can be used to develop harmony between society and economy to achieve the goal of sustainable development. If you look at the past three, a couple of decades, what has happened? See, there are emergence of epidemics and pandemics in throughout the world. Look at the Ebola, SARS, MERC, and now we have the COVID-19. And if you look at some of these epidemics and pandemics, they have challenged the different countries in a different way. And there were economic challenges and economic losses. Now the COVID-19, in fact, has devastated even the world's leading economy. If you look at the economic indicators of many countries, including developing countries like India, our economic indicators are quite strong. And, but now we can see that health indicators and social indicators are not that strong. And there are many reasons, you know, that how the COVID-19 has moved from the animals to the human being. But the, one of the important causes of emergence of pandemic like COVID-19 is because of degraded ecosystems and loss of ecological integrity of our natural ecosystems. And in these loss of natural ecosystems has led to emergence of these pandemics. Because these ecosystems, they retain these pathogens into their natural environment. It may be soil, it may be plant roots, plant surface, or even animals like in case of COVID-19, it was bad. But when their natural homes are destroyed, these, um, these pathogens, they emerge. They look for the alternate host like here in case of, now in case of COVID-19, it is human being. So emergence of new epidemics and pandemics has challenged the human health as well as, well as the economy. Now, what we need to do is, we need to follow a principle of what is known as I'm second. When I'm saying I'm second, I'm talking about the human being. If we follow this principle at the individual level, family level, or society, or national at the global level, we are going to win and we are going to develop sustainably. What is, then first, when I'm saying I'm second, then first is nature. So that means nature is first, nature is supreme. We need to, understand the principle of natural ecosystem, how they work. And if we adapt to ourselves, to those natural principles, we are going to grow sustainably. Otherwise, the human health, economic challenges, social challenges will remain. So today, I want to discuss that how the ecological principles can be used to convert such kind of opportunity into an into a economic benefit and to ensure the human health. So loss of degraded ecosystems, or loss, of, or loss of natural habitat because of contamination is a reality. More than 75% of the Earth's surface has lost its capacity to provide benefits to human society. In fact, the UN has announced this century as the century for restoring the Earth. And the decade of 2021 to 2030 is the UN decade of ecosystem restoration. Because it is, has been realized across the countries that we are suffering because of degraded ecosystems. And we must dedicate this century to restore the earth. And so what is the solution? The solution is we need to understand the ecological and environmental principle so that we can use such ideas to convert and to harness the benefit of economic nature. And one of the principles is ecological entrepreneurship, where we can develop new ideas, new processes, we can identify new opportunities, which are based on natural based processes to convert the problems and challenges for profit of eco profit for economic growth so these ideas are known as ecological entrepreneurship if we train our students into these ideas so that they can translate the theoretical knowledge they can translate the theoretical principles of nature into more profitable nature now i am happy that today I'm going to discuss with my colleagues about the how we can tie the economy and society with environment using the thread of ecological entrepreneurship. I've been teaching and practicing ecotoxicology, environmental biotechnology, restoration ecology for more than 20 years in the University of Delhi. So I'll be sharing some of these ideas which I learned as a student of environment in the past 20 years. First, we'll discuss the linkages between the ecosystem health and human then we'll identify and discuss about the ecological tools 
which can be useful for developing these, or you can say the redesigning the new earth so that you know that more than 75% of the earth surface is degraded and contaminated. So this is an opportunity for our young people to redesign the earth the, the way they want. And the foremost idea is based on the natural principle. And then there are certain economic tools or market tools which can be useful for environmental conservation and production. Because mostly we consider environment and economy as enemy. But here I promise you to show that how economic tools can also be useful to protect the environment. And then how these ecological entrepreneurship can help for employment generation as well as for the benefit of social harmony. So these are the four ideas which we are going to discuss today. Look at the linkages. To identify these linkages between ecosystem health and human well-being, I suggest we must go back to the fundamental ideas which we have been hearing, discussing and learning since school days. Earth. Earth is a system. And this system is composed of several subsystems. And primarily there are four major subsystems. Water, hydrosphere, air, atmosphere, soil, pedosphere or lithosphere, living organisms, pedo biosphere. And these subsystems, all the sphere, they are not, they do not work in isolation. They are interconnected with each other. They are connected with each other through what is known as life supporting processes or biogeochemical cycles. If we look at why the planet Earth has life, one of the idea is because we have biogeochemical cycles, because that sustain life. And that's why they are also known as life supporting services. But what we have done is last 300 years, we have interfered with all these life supporting processes. We have also interfered with the subsystems. That's how we have brought big changes in what is known as global and the global level in the earth system. That's why we are suffering. See, look, I'll give you two examples so that you can understand. We have brought changes in CO2 concentration of atmosphere. It has increased from 330 ppm to 410 ppm or so. What has happened? So this, this change in CO2 concentration in the atmosphere has led to what is known as global climate change. And the, the impact is very high because we are seeing the change in, in monsoon pattern, weather pattern, and changes in what you say the intensity of the floods in different areas and the frequency of floods. And then some areas have become dried, some areas have become more flooded. And the emergence of new I mean, vectors and diseases is also linked with climate change. So we have changed one component of the atmosphere, CO2 concentration, and it has brought many global changes. And it's a big challenge for the economic growth, let me tell you. Climate change is one of the biggest challenges uh, of this century. So this atmosphere, small change. Now you look at any subsystem as well, whether it's biosphere, whether it's uh, hydrosphere, or whether it is soil, we have destroyed the soil, degraded the soil, contaminated the soil, our biodiversity we are losing. And if you look at the hydrosphere, our glaciers are melting because of climate change. So that means all the sub -sub subsystems have been severely impacted by the human activities. So, and we have brought changes at the global level and the earth system level. That's why there is a challenge. And we need to understand that we want to, we have to bring the harmony between these subsystems based on the natural principle. Now, these ecosystems provide large number of benefits to human society. Let me view them. These are some of these benefits are of direct in nature. And, and these in nature, the, these goods are, for example, in the food and uh, what do you say, the food or uh, industrial products or pharmaceuticals, energy or genetic resources. I'll, I'll take example. We know that we, are, uh, we have to rely on ecosystems on food and uh, fiber and uh, shelter and so on. But look at the energy. Even in most, more than 40% of the uh, countries still, or population is still depends on the bio, biomass based energy. If you look at the uh, what is it, the pharmaceutical, the, even the, in the modern system of medicines, more than 70% of the allopathic system of medicines, their prototypes have been derived from, or the idea came from the nature. So that means the, the na natural products gave rise to the development of modern system of medicines. And if you lose these ecosystems and biodiversity, we are going to lose the untapped biodiversity 
which is essential for further growth or development of pharmaceutical industries. We are going to lose those opportunities. So these are the important benefits. In fact, the crop advancement, which is which generally we develop new hybrid variety to tolerate the floods, to tolerate the drought, to tolerate salinity, high temperature, low temperature, disease resistance. Then these genes come from the wild relatives of those crop plants. We use hybridization technique to develop new varieties. But these wild varieties or wild relative of these crop plants are present only in nature, in natural ecosystem. So if we lose those ecosystems, we are going to lose those wild relatives as well. And loss of this wild relative will definitely hamper the further the development and advancements in crops. So that means we are going to, affect, the food security is going to be affected. So these are the ideas and the direct benefit which we get from natural ecosystems and biodiversity. But there are other benefits as well from ecosystems which are not of direct in nature, which are generally ignored, but they are much more potential, they are much more valuable than the direct goods. For example, take regulating services, climate regulation, weather formation, monsoon, and changes in season. They, these are all because of our ecosystems. Disease regulation, take example of pandemic, COVID-19 recent example. This pathogen was, was living very happily in their natural habitat, in forest, in wildlife, like in bat or other organisms. But because of loss of ecosystems, because of interference with the wildlife, now this pathogen has moved from the wildlife animals to the living organisms. Similarly, there are many diseases of different natures. They have emerged throughout the world because of loss of biodiversity because of the loss of ecosystem, because their natural habitats or those pathogens are lost. And these pathogens need to survive and then look for new alternate host. Similarly, now water regulation and water purification, these are the important ecosystem services. Now, there are ecosystems which are present in, on the bank of many rivers. They help in protecting the river health. Well, how? Because if you, for example, if you practice the agriculture close to the river area, and agriculture effluents pass through those natural ecosystems which are in between the agriculture fields as well and the river. Then these agriculture effluents pass through the roots of those plants, whether they are grasses or trees, so though they have the purification effect. So once that effluent reaches to the rivers, then they are less contaminated, they are purified. So that means in these ecosystems which are present between the industry or agriculture in between the river, they help in water purification and the purification of effluents. And then our river health is also maintained. But now what we have done is we are practicing agriculture and the industries as close as to the river. And then we have removed those ecosystem, natural uh, ecosystem or belts composed of many grasses and hedges, sedges, and then they, they had the purification effect, but it is lost. So now what we are releasing directly in, from the agriculture or the industries, the, the effluent which is rich in toxin. So we are losing those benefits. So this is one of the example and the take example of water purification. In many cities or, or country or many parts of the world, because of unscientific development and concretization of many natural ecosystems, our aquifers are choked. Aquifers are those areas where the when the water comes through rain that, that percolates through through the soil and goes to the our groundwater system. So water, uh, groundwater recharge is a natural phenomenon, but because of unscientific development and we are, we are losing those benefits and what our groundwater recharge is less, water abstraction and removal of water from the groundwater is very high. So groundwater table is going down and down and down. And we are losing those groundwater recharge as a benefit from ecosystem. We are suffering from water security, you know is. So these are some of the benefits which we get and these are very important benefits for human survival. These are important benefits even for industrial growth because we do need water and healthy environment and healthy soil for many industries. And storm protection is the last example which I want to discuss. See, the flood, because of climate change, the flood intensity and frequency has increased. Okay, now they even some of the natural disasters like tsunami and cyclones, they're also interfering with our economic growth and challenging the human life. But look at even the current cyclone which has happened in West Bengal. I, I'll see, I'll ask you to go and see, visit some of those ecosystems, wherever the natural ecosystems, our mangroves were protected. 
the impact of these cyclones from in, in the mainland was low. And wherever those ecosystems were degraded, so impact to the mainlands and human life was very high. And similarly, in case of tsunami, wherever the our mangroves were protected or coastal wet, coastal in ecosystems were protected in Nicobar, Vice Nicobar, or Gram Andaman Nicobar or Chennai, our impact of those the tsunami was only up to 500 meter or one mile. And wherever those ecosystems were destroyed and degraded, the impact went up to the five miles or even to ten miles. So these natural ecosystems provide as an insurance insurance against the natural calamities. And since we are degrading and destroying those ecosystems, we are losing those benefits. Now, there are another kind of services which we get from ecosystems are cultural services. We are rich in culture because we are rich in biodiversity. Our rituals and traditions are dependent on ecosystems and the kind of biodiversity we have around. Take example of East, in, in East India or West India, so North India or in South India. Our rituals and traditions are many are similar, but many are different because we deal with different kind of biodiversity. Take example of again agriculture community and fishery community. Their rituals and traditions are different. Fishery community primarily depend on bioresources like fish, whereas agriculture community they depend on the agriculture crops. Similarly, the nomadic community is therefore different because they deal with, they interact with, they rely on their livelihood on different kind of biodiversity. That's why the rituals and traditions are different. So if we lose these in ecosystems and biodiversity, our cultures are equally threatened. So cultural diversity and ecosystem diversity is, are directly linked. But there are another kind of benefits from ecosystem. Take our example of artists, painters, poets. They get inspiration from nature, the rivers, mountain health, forest health, scenic beauty. But if ecosystems are degraded, contaminated, polluted, then inspiration value is lost. You cannot expect in, in, uh, from a poet to write a good, po good poetry by, by looking at some other nala or polluted sites. So these are artistic the, the, or artists and the, such kind of creativity are lost if we lose our ecosystems and biodiversity. So our cultural heritage is, will remain protected if our ecosystems are protected and conserved. Now, another kind of uh, services which we, we don't see generally, which is the foundation of all those services, let me tell you. If, and these services are known as supporting services. Sub supporting services means soil health in a very simple way. Otherwise, <coughs> you can specify that soil formation, nutrient cycling, and primary productivity, these are the supporting services. So if we maintain those processes which maintain the soil health and soil formation, that means our supporting services are intact and there will be continuous flow of regulating and cultural services. But if the soil health is not maintained, then our flow of cultural services and regulatory services will also be affected. Now what we have done is in the last 300 years, we have destroyed the very foundation of our civilization. If you look at the civilization, there are the civilization developed and flourished because of two factors, healthy soil and healthy water. Now we have destroyed the very foundation of our civilization. Waters are contaminated and soils are degraded. So if we want to restore the sustainability in our growth, we must restore the supporting services. We must revive and restore the water and soil health. Only then we can have continuous flow of these goods and services for the benefit of human well-being as well as for sustenance of Earth system. Now, the biggest challenge is now we are contaminating these ecosystems by spreading some industrial chemicals because we are losing those benefits from ecosystem for purification. Now, spread of these contaminants into all parts of the life and different components of the environment is common. And because of spread of these contaminants, more than 70,000 different chem industrial chemicals are present into the environment. And these, some of these chemicals they mimic like our reproductive hormones. That's why they are known as endocrine receptors. These endocrine receptors interferes with the reproductive health of all living organisms, including human beings. And whether it's otter, alligator, fish, bird, mollusk, or bird. So they, they are being in a, their multiplication and reproductive health is being interfered by these chemicals. That's why the spread of these contaminants has been considered as the, one of the biggest challenges of 
which are threatening our biodiversity and ecosystems. Now, human well-being and ecosystem health is quite critically linked. There are four four-year program, Millennium Ecosystem Assessment Program was undertaken by more than 95 different countries. There are more than 1,300 different experts from ecology, environment, social science, history, political science, law, and humanity. So they participated and discussed what, what is the biggest challenge for the quality of life and human survival. So they have identified that in last century, we have degraded our ecosystem somehow. And loss of ecosystem health is directly linked with the quality of life. So if we want to improve the quality of life, we must restore our ecosystems. So that's why the UN has announced this century as the century for restoring the earth. And the decade of 2021 to 2030 is UN decade of ecosystem restoration. Now, we are more worried about the three trillion economy, but look at the nature's capital. The nature provide annual benefit of more than 145 trillion US dollar per year without any investment from human being. And these goods and services, which I've discussed now in just a few minutes ago, they're more than 145 trillion US dollar. And so that means if we want to be sustainable in our practices, we must protect this industry. We must protect this capital more than 145 trillion US dollar. So if you protect our ecosystems, protect our biodiversity, improve the environmental health, so that means we are improving our share in more than 145 trillion US dollar benefit. So now what are the major, what is the major challenge presently? The major challenge is we are losing these ecosystem services and we are getting into the poor quality of life. Now, what is most important is now, this is, these are the two important messages which you which we must remember. The native biodiversity and healthy ecosystems, they ensure human well-being. And they're important directly and indirectly for human survival and well-being. And ecosystem health and quality of life are critically linked. Now, to move before moving to the second aspect of um, part of our lecture, uh, this is a time for quiz.